All right, hi guys, let's have a look at animation caching in 2019. This is a really exciting features for any of the animators out there. Let's just have a look at this scene without animation caching on at first. You can tell that animation caching's on down the bottom here by clicking that, uh, you'll see that this blue bar starts to happen. But if we click that off, now the animation caching has gone away. So we can just press play uh, on this scene just to see what the defaults are. And it's playing around 30 to 40 frames a second, depending whether I've got the screen capture software running, which I do at the moment. Um, so this is playing pretty decently at the moment, especially considering that we've got a follicle uh, constraint set up on the necklace here, which will slow the rig speeds down significantly. So we can get this up without the necklace up to like 60 frames a second here. So with animation caching, we just want to switch it on. We click it there, see the comparisons. Now what happens is blue bar starts to draw out there. And once that's filled, uh, now we can press that scene and we can see an inc uh, incredible difference in performance here. We're getting up to 150 frames per second. Screen capture is running, it goes up to 160, 170. So this machine is a couple of years old now. It's a uh, 16 cores. That's an eight dual core running at about four gigahertz. So uh, there we go. Really, really nice rig speeds here. So let's go through a little bit about animation caching. There is quite a lot to know and it's definitely worth reading the docs for this. It can be a little bit crashy at first. Uh, this is a very brand new feature. There's a lot of things going on. So there are a lot of known issues. Uh, it's worth reading through the docs on that one. So just to show you the next thing, let's get in here and modify some animation to see how this works. So if we come here and we grab this guy here, go on one of these keyframes here. Now, if we move this around a little bit, we can set another keyframe. Now, if you watch this little blue bar, it happens very quickly. Uh, so we can just set a keyframe there, for example and it just it updates that section only of the cache. So that's almost immediately fixing only that section of the animation and then updating it. So you can see that necklace is swinging right up there, intersecting in, let's just do something stupid, like intersect it through the thing there, got some weird bump. There we go. So that's now going to be playing at a full frame rate very, very easily. So it's only caching what it needs to there. Now these little guys here is showing you how much memory it's eating up. So at the moment, if I switch across to memory here, I've got this up from the task manager and click on memory here. It's not too bad. It's not doing it. Now this will significantly go up the heavier that your scene is. And if we set up uh, the, the HUD, so if we go into display HUDs, heads up display, by the way, cache, that is this one down here. And if we come into poly count, this guy's this one. Now don't have poly count up while you're animating. It slows the scenes down. We can see that we're operating here at about 80,000 tries. So 40,000 faces on this character, which is, so it's a pretty medium res sort of a character, this guy. But of course, as soon as we start doing other stuff, we start to put the sub Ds on, this is going to change things significantly. And we're getting up to 150,000 tries. And that's only if I come into the smooth mesh options here, only at one division level. So we go up another one. Uh, it's all multiplying out and now we're close to half a million tries in the scene. Now this is going to be significantly slower to, to play blast this, or sorry, to do the first round of uh, of the caching. Once that's done now at um, 400,000 there, this is significantly faster. Now we're only getting 50 frames per second here. So you do have to remember to switch this HUD off and on my hotkeys, that's control alt and Y. So just switch that off. And then we'll see it go right up nicely again to over a hundred frames a second in the thing. Now, one thing that's happening here too, this is something that I've noticed is that textures are sort of mucking up a, a little bit here. And um, this is the next thing to sort of know. So it depends how your textures are set up. I'm using face selection on this. So there's a few different shaders. There's like three or four different shaders on this mesh. And it doesn't like that by default if you're using the default, the, the global open sub div Catmull Clark type. So you just switch that off and you go back to my default Catmull Clark and that can fix things up. Even so, even if you do that and you now hit play, I have noticed that it can still muck up the textures a little bit. So we'll let that play through and uh, you'll see even so the textures can sort of mess up a bit as they are here. So what I found is, see these textures doing weird things in there. What I found is that the cache does need to be flushed. So right click on this and you guys won't see it here because it's off screen, but down here there is a button called flush cache and use that a lot to re-update your scene. So you can flush that there. It's not gonna make much of a difference, but if I play that through now in my testing that has fixed a lot of issues. And we've now got our textures all working properly. So this will slowly get updated to other things that global open sub div Catmull Clark. I believe this is faster, but I'm finding it's having not many issues with my Catmull Clark. Although I have noticed that the memory does go up a little bit as soon as you start to work it a lot more. 
But overall, I've been super happy with the testing on this. Obviously, these rig speeds are great. It means we have multiple characters in our scene and a lot of other cool stuff. Take off the animation curves and you see that playing there. Of course, now that we come back into a real scenario, we can switch this back to playing at 24 frames a second. Just save that here and we can work on this scene normally. Now, the good thing about this too is we can sort of be guaranteed that we're not going to be dropping frames. So we don't have to play blast anymore. Maya would drop the occasional frame. It would just get a little bit annoying when you really want to get accurate play blasting back on your characters. Got that really weird bump that's happening there. Come back into here and maybe delete some of those frames there and fix that up a little bit and you can see it working here. So that interestingly then that did do a full recache. So it's not perfect as you can see there, but I have um, been playing around with it a little bit and I've been very impressed by it. And, and I would expect that this is only going to get better in the future as Autodesk tweaks this. So if you have any scenes that have a lot of issues, definitely send those through to the Autodesk team to get them testing on these more and more so that they can get the algorithm a lot more reliable. Uh, sorry, one more thing that I forgot here. This is very important. By default, the animation cache is on evaluation cache. So this is a little bit slower too. And if you switch to that, I would do a flush cache every time to test that. I have had a couple of crashes switching between that. Usually you just figure out what's good for you and then go with it, adding everything back into the cache and speeding that up. But that evaluation cache is a little bit of a safer mode, I've to been told. Uh, it's a little bit slower, doesn't play as fast. We'll see that we're not going to get those crazy high speeds. We're down a lot lower now um, with that playing. That's interesting. It's really low, but I was getting about 30 or 40 frames per second in that mode. Just to be aware of that one, um, use the software cache or the hardware cache. Now I've got a 1070 video card working on this. Hardware cache is the one I was demoing on, but I found that the viewport cache as well is pretty decent. So I'll switch to that. And I just do a flush cache every time just to be a bit more careful and we'll see what we get out of the software as well. I, I have noticed the software is, is very fast as well. So look up what all those options mean in the help here. Uh, you can come down here and tells you about the different caching types here. So uh, check those out and see what happens. So interestingly, uh, that's because we were limiting that. So we'd have to come back on and play every frame to see what the top speeds are. And uh, we're getting up to a nicer frame rate there, playing at 60 frames a second. Maybe this needs to be flushed. I was getting over 100 frames, so I think it's just a little bit flaky at the moment. But we could try coming back to hardware and then seeing what that does. Flushing the cache again, wait for that to load. That seems to be going through a little bit more quickly. And now we're up to those sort of top speeds. So the 1080 is doing very, very well here with that speed in the GPU mode, I guess. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that little video on animation caching. I'd expect this to only get better and better. Really lovely release here from Autodesk. And I look forward to future updates, making this more and more stable.